actually robots offer two major advantages over the other traditional machines or the other machineries which are being used in the industries and manufacturing plants so the, the mainly two advantages which they provide are nothing but the providing a total automation capability of over, over the whole manufacturing plant which not only improves the quality of the product but it also significantly reduces the cost this means that you know take an example a uh, Volkswagen company or GM Motors which are being uh, which are uh, they adapt robots in their manufacturing line so when they use robots for manufacturing a car or a uh, plant or any kind of product the robots not only work for 24 bar 7 but it also provides the best quality and uh, th there is no space for mistakes and the precision is so much good and uh, they also don't uh, come up with any problems like the workers or the employers in the company so they, they, they won't expect any kind of increments in their salary they won't be uh, taking rest in between the working hours so there are lots and lots of advantages over uh, implementing a robot in a manufacturing plant so the second would be they provide capability of adapting the manufacturing line more quickly to changes in the old products or for the new addition this this point is a bit important because if you are bringing up a new technology or a new kind of product or new kind of improvement or update in a product uh, in a company you need to teach or you need to train the employees according to it so that they could they they they, they need to they need some more time to uh, change themselves and they need some more time to adapt themselves to the new technology or uh, they need to learn exactly what the upgrade is all about but for a robot there's no need of that there's just fraction of seconds you can code it and send the updates to the robot so that it could understand and make the product better now these two are a few important and major advantage over having a robot uh, in an uh, factory or a manufacturing unit than using a standard missionaries or traditional missions. So yes, uh, this is one of the main uh, important slide because you need, you better take a note of it or better take a screenshot or save it for it because this is where i'll be explaining about the components the important components of a robot so in this case i have taken an industrial robot as you could see in the image or in the figure the part the the industrial robot has been divided into seven major parts so the let's start on with the first part robotic arm robot arm so these terms like uh joint actuator sensor end effector robot arm they are the terms which i have mentioned in the previous section session so you can uh, go back and have a look if you don't understand what it means so robot arm is nothing but an uh, similar kind of arm to a human so it move it helps to move around and it helps helps to carry or it helps to uh, hear the payload of the robot <clears throat> So the articulated mechanical system or the arm of the robot both we can call so it includes joints links and wrist as you could see in the image robot arm is a combination of a joint an elbow joint a tactical sensor a uh, uh, tactical sensor which is which is not a part of robot arm but it is connected to the wrist so wrist part is uh, provided and the function of the wrist part is to have the end effector or the gripper in it and there is also the link the link in the sense you could see the bar over the image right so that's called the link so let me show you uh or explain with my arm if you take your arm this part is going to be called as the link so and this part is the wrist and here you could see the joint so that's how uh, robot is also being designed and the second uh, important part is that end effector end effectors or grippers or something which is used to carry or to sense or to engage with the environment 
and the third part would be the electric actuator in this uh, uh, let me tell you not as an electric actuator but uh, let's uh, consider it as in just an actuators because there are different types of actuators and i'll be mentioning about what an actual actuator is all about and uh, the different types of actuators in the upcoming slides so you just uh, make a note of uh, make a note of this image to understand what the actuator is so actuators with their power supplies provide the mechanical power to move the robot arm that's the function of the actuator so primarily uh, many robots use electric actuators because they are much more efficient and effective uh, than using an hydraulic and pneumatic actuators i'll be explaining about those in the upcoming slides so the transmission system is the fourth part transmission system is nothing but um, a kind of uh, object which helps to uh, transmit the power from one point to another so if you are a mechanical engineer you could know what a transmission transmission system is such as cables bells gears and hoses are few examples of that and the fifth part would be the internal sensors which is to monitor the motion of robot the the, the primary function of a sensor is to uh, sense the environment and sen uh, and it sends send s e n d s sends the information from the sensor to the brain part of the robot so that it could uh, actually understand what the environment is and what the situation is and according to the information which gathered from the sensor the brain part of the robot will be reacting so as you could see here in the image the fifth part is a position sensor so uh, this is a rough image so the position sensor or sensors can be attached anywhere it depends upon the function of the robot so the sixth would be the external sensors external sensors are nothing but the extra sensors which be uh, which a robot needs to understand the position of the robot with respect to the environment okay then the seventh part control system control system is nothing but the brain part of the robot so which it may include computer chips controlling each axis of motion a, a robot brain or central computer directing overall activity so you could read these slides and meanwhile i want to show you what exactly a controller is all about so here i have an arduino mega board so arduino mega board is nothing but an uh, development mode and this is an uh, mini computer kind of thing but not exactly that but this uh, board is being used to send the code and logic that we need to implement into a robot so you just uh, i i i'll explain what arduino board and arduino programming is all about in the uh, future session i think by sixth session i'll be explaining this about so you just have a look what the brain of a robot can be so not only Arduino boards, there are many other development boards like Raspberry Pi and uh, Big Brain and etc. So these are a few development boards or controllers which can be used to control the robot in the altogether. So here is an image of a robot. Here you could see the mobile base of the robot and then robotic arm and then camera. So as you could see, that's not exactly a camera, but I am just saying for you understand, but it, it is a uh, sensor, camera is nothing but a sensor. So this part is an proximity, uh, we can we can actually implement or uh, install any kind of sensors like camera, proximity sensors, and a kind of uh, exact many other things. So this is an, a typical robot, which has three joints comparable to a human arm, shoulder, elbow, breast, just as I show. So um, a manipulator is a mechanical arm that moves the desired object through three dimensional space, nothing but in the real world. So connecting the manipulator with the object or various tools or grippers act usually called as an end effector. So uh, you could see in the image that end effector is nothing but the clip which is shown at the end of the robotic arm. So although often supplied as a part of a complete robot system external sensors and grippers are usually considered to be the accessories and not part of the industrial robot itself so these are some extra 
sub parts that are being uh, required for uh, industrial robot, the sensors and grippers. So they are included in the figure and uh, discussed in this uh, session because they are a bit important and uh, necessary part of the system. So in order to design a robot system, a company needs a wide variety of skills. When robots were first designed, mechanical engineering skills were the primary requirement. So that's where a robot design started. So if you're, if you're going to build a robot, the first thing which we need uh, you need is a mechanical skill. As robots become part of industrial production, manufacturing engineering skills were much needed. So as, a, as the next part would be the server control. As server control and advanced sensors begin to bloom in today's world, the need for electronics engineer to enter the field become more important. Further steps, which were required for uh, required or the skilled programmers, computer hardware engineers, language designers, and vision specialists. I mean, the computer vision specialists. So the, the next generation of robot will require people skilled in artificial intelligence and such specialized areas as laser technology, ultrasonics, and advanced sensors. So here you could see the algorithm of building a robot. And uh, so the, the, the primary thing is the which I want to explain is the robotics subject is actually all about the four, sorry, okay, well, four important sub other sub subjects. Like, first step is you need a mechanical engineering skill to design a robot. And the second would be the electronics and electrical engineers because the sensors, the controllers, the remote drivers, or the parts which are required to build a robot and an electronics engineer could understand and program it for based upon the function of the robot. And the third would be the computer science engineer because the coding is the main part of a robot. Then if we are going to command a robot to do a certain task, we need to enter certain set of codes or we need to enter certain sets of language or algorithms to understand, to make the robot to understand our requirement. So that part is being filled up by computer science engineer. And in the future, or not even in the future, but even today, we are in a huge demand for artificial intelligence engineers. Because artificial intelligence is uh, much important than any other subject because today's robots are being, uh, we are in, in need of today, uh, the robots which can decide by itself to make the best action and uh, it, it should be a completely autonomous system. So for making a robot autonomous or to make a system autonomous, we need artificial intelligence. Let's start with classifying uh, classifying the robot with the basis of degrees of freedom. So a good place to begin a discussion of robot is by describing its degree of freedom. Oh, so the, the, there is some confusion in the literature between uh, degrees of freedom and degrees of mobility. So we don't need to concentrate on what degrees of mobility is. If you want, make note of what. Uh, degree of mobility is and uh, you can google it later so so the primary scope of this session is going to be under the degree of freedom only so Condon and odisha were two engineers who define degrees of freedom in the best way so it sta they stated that the number of independent coordinates which are needed which needed to express the position of a uh, robots all the parts it is known as the degree of the number of degree of freedom. So if you take a uh, system or a manipulator or even a robot, the number of independent coordinates or the number of independent ways or uh, uh, the dimensions where a part can move is called as the number of degree of freedom. So thus a coordinate independence and number of links contribute to robots degree of freedom. So if you are de determining the number of independent variables needed to define motion in any robot determines the minimum degree of freedom required, which means actually I'm, I, I am trying to explain that 
uh, the, the degree of freedom is completely dependent on the number of links that are attached to a robot. If you are adding a more arm to an, a human, he can move into more uh, directions or some more coordinates in the 3D world. So, so as for a robot. If you take a manipulator and if you're going to add uh, two more arms to it, so it, it, the, the whole robotic system has more degree of freedom now. It can move around a uh, various workspace, uh, uh, sorry, not various, it can move around a huge workspace covering up and a huge envelope. So for a typical robot, in defector, in defector is nothing but the tool or gripper which you could see in the image, they have pointed it. So the gripper or the tool center point can be placed anywhere in the space, which uh, requires three degree of freedom because we are living in a three dimensional world. So if you're going to point a gripper or the tool center to any object, it requires three degree of freedom to rotate or to move and then oriented in any direction, which require another three degree of freedom. Orientation is not orientation is nothing but the angles which it can move. So let's call it the alpha, theta, beta. So these three angles are nothing but where uh, can move rotational. The rotational motion is being achieved by implementing the extra three degree of freedom for orientation. So therefore, totally six degree of freedom are required to specifically control the motion of any end effector with respect to the robot space. It's allowing any possible position and orientation to be reached within its workspace. So workspace is nothing but the total area that a gripper could cover. So if you place your hand in a table and you just rotate it and you, if you can reach out to the maximum space that in a table your handle could ha your hand could reach is called as the workspace so in in summary requirements imposed on agility coverage area type of tool and payload influence the number of degree of freedom of a robot so thus selecting a proper robot for task requires that number of degree of freedom needed by that task as well as any future task that robot is expected to perform so robots are commercially available with few uh, degree of freedom as a three and as many as seven or even more degree of freedom. It completely depends on the requirement and the purpose of robot. So if you're going to buy a robot or make a robot, first thing which we, you need to know is the number of degree of freedom that a robot can move. The classification of robots based upon the platforms used. So there are actually three kinds of platforms, gantry, AGV, and mobile robots. Uh, I'll be discussing about it one by one. So let's understand what a gantry robot is. Oh, a gantry robot is mounted overhead, which is usually on a ceiling or it runs along the tracks or rails, and it can move over the cluttered environment. So the, the robot arm is lowered from the mobile base to pick up and move items, especially heavy items, which human can't bear. Or it may, it may, for example, use an electromagnet to move heavy bars of steel or heavy parts or heavy equipment, heavy and other equipments, which human can't bear. And it is, in general, electromagnet is being used to the, for, for the carrying purposes. Gantry robots have fairly good mobility. So in this image, you could see the, an example of a gantry robot. So the arrow marks indicates the motion. So gantry robots are nothing but a, a mobile robot, which, which have a platform like a rail or a running tracks, as you could see over here, this part. And this part is the robotic arm, which is being, which is being used for the <clears throat> pickup and placing objects. So generally in manufacturing plant, uh, gantry robot is something basically you needed for uh, a good use. Next is the AGV and mobile robots. 
so agv many many actually confuse with automatic automated guided vehicle with the another mobile robot so and agv is an automated guided vehicle and it is a small driverless um, <clears throat> can we call it as a truck that moves material around a manufacturing plant or a warehouse by following a path and uh, this the, uh, you can see in the image which uh, is an example of an agv most agvs are designed to stop if something gets in their way and it is done using an proximity sensor so they must wait for an operator to clear the path so agv primarily is an experimental stage and uh, many companies have already implemented few of them like uh, you can check it out what orange robotics does and even in amazon warehouses uh, these kind of agvs are being used so they can actually recognize an object and uh, move around the warehouse or manufacturing unit carrying large number of parts at a time so this is an uh, pre programmed robot which is a uh, it is being commanded to move in a certain path so what is a mobile robot so mobile robots are just beginning to be found in factories and uh, one pioneered by companies like cybernation cybermation and uh, a mobile robot can be programmed to travel anywhere inside the plant rather than just following a path so uh, this is kind of uh, see agv moves in certain platform and it needs a clear flow, flow or clear guide for not for uh, the mobile robot have clear advantage over that because it can move around any place that it wants inside the factory as it is designed in such a way so that's the main difference the design the design between these two or the the primary difference which brings yeah now let's talk about the classification based on power source so power sources are nothing but the actuators so uh, actu an, an actuator is nothing but which helps to transmit the power from uh, and link uh, it which helps to transmit the power between any two joints or between links or even from a link to joint or joint to link so there are primarily three types of uh motive power have been used to drive the manipulator arm or any kind of robotic system these three uh, i have mentioned here the hydraulic pneumatic and electric so gripper motive power is usually pneumatic and electric so many don't prefer hydraulic let me explain it one by one so here is an example of hydraulic robot as you could see in the image these pipes are where the hydraulic fluid is being used as an actuator uh, and i mean actuating fl uh, fluid or an actuating system so hydraulic actuators are smaller than electric motors with the same power output thus a uh, uh, hydraulic actuator add less mass to the robot which allows it to carry more weight for the same power a distinct advantage in the largest robots is this thing so where um, It, it actually a hydraulic motor can carry a way more power. Uh, I mean, it may way more payload in the the same power as electric motors. So with the uh, hydraulic robots, only a single uh, low cost motor is needed. So which we uh, as like uh, to pump the fluid from the base or from a reservoir to all over the robot. So that's the only low cost motor that is being needed in a hydraulic robot. so hydraulic system store energy uh and thus it can handle transient load conditions better so one one problem with most hydraulic systems is their tendency to leak oil thus making the workplace very messy and dangerous sometimes so another problem is the noise that make because uh, for pumping uh, the fluid from one reservoir to all over the robot it it actually makes a uh, much noise and the leakages are also one kind one on such disadvantage of having an hydraulic robot so since hydraulics are generally one uh, only used in large robots they can be quite noisy noisy as you could understand there are many parts and there be more motors that be working so for both these reasons hydraulic robots are being supplanted by electric models
So next we'll be seeing about the pneumatic. And uh, as I mentioned about electric motors in the hydraulic in, in this slide, so I would just move on to electric first and I'll get back to the pneumatic actuators. So electric motors offer the convenience of obtaining their power from a wall source or from a battery. And they don't need any bulky hydraulic pneumatic power sources. They just they, they provide more power than pneumatic sources and uh, less workspace contaminated than hydraulic sources. So as you could see, it has clear advantage over hydraulic and pneum uh, pneumatic systems because hydraulic robotic system needs uh, much more space and uh, they, they do need, they, they do make noises and they are much um, dangerous than, I mean, the dangerous in the sense relative to electric uh, motors or electric systems. So these a uh, few advantages of having an electric motor power source. So therefore, it is no surprise that all electric robot has just about to replace the other two types of robots, except in a uh, few specialized applications. There, there, are, there are many types of electric motors and most types have been tried. So some type of robot. I'll also explain about it. So choosing an ideal motor for a perfect robot is always a tough task while designing the robot especially for industries so, uh, proper selection of electric motors in industrial robots requires several parameters to take account for arm control and arms position and angular and linear moments so there are many types of motors available today in, in today's market the, but mostly tiny pager motors servo motors linear motors stepper motors and even the DC gear motors are used in the robots according to their application area. I mean, it totally depends upon the purposes of the robot. So I have got a couple of uh, I mean, a couple of motors to show you. So here, so this is an servo motor. This is actually a micro servo motor which I am showing you now. Uh, I have used this for a um, few DIY projects, and this motor is mostly common type and very less weight and you could see here it is mentioned as micro servo 9 grams I hope you could see no sorry you could not see it, see it clearly so this is an uh, servo motor and i also have bought a small dc motor okay, as you could see uh, see here this is and dc this is how a dc motor looks like so Choosing types of electric motors is totally depends on the purpose of your robot. So pneumatic robots. Pneumatic robots are based on the pressure available from compressed air. So pneumatic systems are nothing but the, the, the main working fluid is air. So pneumatics have two principal uses. To control the joints in a small lower power robots and to supply motive power to operate the end effector. So the, the air pressure can move the joints, but the effective pressure via the, the rise of low reservoir volume and temperature or few constraints of having the uh, to maintain the air pressure. So air pressure is compressible and it is so precise control of joints is not possible to through direct control over the air pressure, which means that using an air fluid, we can't give the precision control over the joints. So therefore, pneumatic robots that require greater accuracies must use additional components such as a digital air valve for controlling the positions and the air brake for holding the positions. So it's, it is nothing but we require an advanced system of valves to maintain the accuracy of the joints and end effectors. So uh, there are many disadvantages also of using a pneumatic system she requires a clean air and often cleaner than that is available in a factory because an uh, abrasive dust, moisture, oil drops in the air can cause excessive downtime to pneumatic robots. So extra filtering of air is a wise precaution and uh, it also be a bit costlier for adding more components into a robot. So this classification is completely about the intelligence. 
So current robots have a wide spectrum of intelligence because from from simplest pick and place robot, uh, which may try to insert a part that is not there, uh, to complex piano robot that can recognize a song being sung and then play the piece in time with the singer. So these are two wide uh, range from a pick and place robot to an automated piano playing robot. So in, in, in general, in general, seven levels of intelligence classifications can be defined, but only the first six listed are commercially available till now. So I have mentioned the seven parts, away, I mean, the seven uh, important listing, listing here. So the seven types of uh, intelligence is this. The first one starts with the robots under complete manual control, which is used in uh, underwater search of ship works. And uh, I have the bracket mentions uh, the few examples of the intelligence systems. So unprogrammable robots, which means hard automation systems. Unprogrammable robots are nothing, but uh, we, we, we once give certain types of codes to it and it will follow the, the same codes or the same algorithm till the end. It, it doesn't need any kind of improvement or it, it doesn't need any kind of other algorithms or codings other than the primary code which we give them initially. Okay, the third is robots that learn through a teaching mode, typically a paint spraying robot. Because it, it, uh, uh, a teaching mode is nothing but it teaches for itself. That's where artificial intelligence and machine learning comes in. So a robot, a robot is, the third type of intelligence is where the robot is being, uh, understands its environment and understand what it is doing actually, and it learns from itself. The fourth type that is, it senses errors and shutdowns. It is nothing but uh, if an error is being occurred in an environment or in the robot itself, the robot senses the errors and it automatically stops its working. So that's an important and most, most important, I would say, because it's not only being an important and existing in industrial robots, but for every robot, it should be implemented. And the primary coding or the primary motto of intelligence is that it should not harm the product or it should not harm the environment or it should not harm any kind of living organisms including humans. So if it can't contact or if it is going to hurt a living organism or an, uh, yeah, it is going to damage a product, it should automatically sense the danger or the warning and it should stop working by itself. And the fifth classification. So the fifth is the robots that accept new direction while online. So this is nothing but new direction in the sense that update or an upgrade which we give to a robot, it should automatically senses, not automatically, it should senses and understands the command properly and it should uh, improvise and it should work according to it. So the sixth would be robots that sense a change in the environment and change in the response. And this is nothing but smart robot. So a smart robot is, uh, it, it should sense the environment and it should change its course of action or a, uh, the primary task, it, it should change the path, but it should not change the primary task. So the way of robot working should be changed uh, continuously according to the environment's change. So the seventh would be robots that learn from mistakes. So this is much similar to the third one, because uh, this is in still an experimental stage, uh, that's where the artificial intelligence machine learning comes in as uh, it should learn from an, each mistake and it should not uh, do it again. So that's where the quality or the precision of a robot is being significantly important. <laughs>